So we're going to do some more pentatonic stuff back by popular demand and click that link down below. There's a video not on YouTube that will tell you how to break down and start to think how to play over a 1-4-5, right? The most popular blues progression ever. And it's going to help you how to play over the chords a little bit better. But this lesson, I get tons of requests for this kind of stuff. So we're going to, this is going to be like a multi-part series. Where we're gonna try to unlock the veiled mysteries of the pentatonic scale and how to get different tones and flavors and all sorts of gizmos and doodads out of the same old box, but we're just gonna fill in the notes and super sugar crisp it. <laughs> all right, so let's zoom in for a closer look and break down some riffs. All right, so this could be your first endeavor with me. And in that case, I wanna break down the box that we're going to use. I know all of you are familiar with the, or most of you are familiar with the pentatonic scale. I like using the A minor because it's right in the middle. Um, and I think of, even usually when I'm playing major pentatonic, I almost still think out of a minor pentatonic box. You know, that's a lot of us out there were kind of shown how to play minor pentatonic blues riffs first. So we're just going to hyperimpose the major over the top of that. Now, there's something to be said for learning how to play strict major pentatonic riffs, and I highly recommend you do that. Um, you know, you can learn how to play the Hendrix style rhythm stuff, which is really what opened the door for me. You know, when you hear them. <laughs> stuff um all that stuff is really what unlocked major pentatonic for me so learning how to play rhythm sometimes will be the most beneficial thing for your lead playing but that's not what we're going to do today and if you want to see more of that you know let me know down below um but anyways so a minor pentatonic, right? We're familiar with the notes. Make sure you learn, you know, all five positions of the pentatonic. They're the same notes, but as you move up and down the fretboard, they have to be positioned differently, right? So the notes will fit. Um, but if we're taking box one, I'm going to use all of these notes. I'm going to use five, seven, eight on E and I'm gonna use five six seven on A five six seven on D five six seven and eight that's often referred to as the blues note um, on the G string and then I'm gonna go five seven eight five seven eight now within this lies the secret to the pentatonic awesomeness universe <laughs> And what we can do is rather than worrying about, okay, this note is from the major, this note is from the minor, all that kind of stuff, we can do two things. We're in a minor box, okay? But within that minor box is also our A major chord. So right off the bat, we know that note right there is going to sound major. So if we want to have that sound, we can always hit that note and it'll sound great. A lot of times in blues you hear guys go. Right, and do that sort of thing. They're just hammering on the minor third or the note that makes the chord minor to the note that makes the chord major. Okay, so we're going to utilize that kind of stuff. now. Also, 
We're doing major chord right there. You know, oftentimes you'll hear people, you know, add this note, the B7, the E7, you know, the, the Hendrix stuff. Right, the suspended. So I want to utilize all those notes within that one box to really play around with it and it really works great if you're playing against a rhythm that's kind of like five chords which the chords are neither major or minor it's just a root and a fifth something like what I was playing in the intro right something like that and that lends itself to, that sounds kind of minor, but those major notes will work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by bending, like typically like a, right? You're bending up to the A note, right? That's why that bend always sounds so good against the A chord. Because you're bending up to the A note right there, right? So that's our, our tonal center. But what I like to do then is, pull off to the seventh fret and then bend it up a half step. So we got. And then I'll go into the minor third, right? So we kind of major, pull off, and then I come back to that note again and then hit my minor third. So right there, what we've done is we've pulled in and out of major and minor pentatonic with just, you know, one string, basically. And if you want to add a little pizzazz, a little bam, right, at the end for an exclamation point, you can hit this note and then pull it into that major third right at the end. Right? So that's one of the things you can do. Now, another thing that people will do a lot is they'll bend this note. Sometimes what I like to do, instead of bending this note right here, I'll bend up the fifth fret. Right? It sounds a little bit different, something I totally pinched off Van Halen, and he does it all the time, and it sounds wicked. So you should do it too, right? If Van Halen does it, you should do it. Right? So then we'll go back to that major third and pull it into that major sound. So we've gone. Right? That's what you could normally do. Right? That's that stacking I always do. And then I'm going to bend up the 5th fret G. Then I'm going to come back to my A, our, our key center. Do the stacking notes up and down and then go. Kind of hammering on from 5 to 6 on the G. And that's going to get us into that major chord again, right? We're hammering on to that major third, and then back to A, where we can take it wherever we want. We can go back to minor, right? Walk down. Right? So what I did there, seven, five, and then I don't slide it like this. I go. Right? So it's like an immediate slide from seven to five. Right? I'm walking down. And then I go C. Did you see how I did that? <laughs> All right, so anyways, we got right, which would pull us back into that minor sound. So right now we're going in and out of major and minor. This is the secret. This is what, you know, 90% of the people out there always hear in, in really great players, whether it's Clapton, Angus Young, Van Halen, all the wicked, you know, shred guys like Van Halen, Warren D. Martini, George Lynch. 
All these guys are constantly going in and out of major and minor. And most of those guys are really playing hybridized pentatonic scales, right? A majority of what they do is based in pentatonic. That's why I really stress pentatonic, because it's really musical. Now, there's Satriani, Vi, all these guys, Ingbe, that use real modal scales, right? But they still, too, Satriani especially, really lies, relies heavily on pentatonic scales. So master that, and your whole world will open up. And then when you learn those modes, you can infuse those little other notes, and it really will just take your playing to, you know, the stratosphere, right? <laughs> or telosphere, teleosphere. <laughs> Man, the bad jokes are flying. All right, so here we go. All right, so I know I'm going to run out of space here, so I'm going to pause and then come right back. All right, so we're back. So, also, we always hear people, or maybe you don't, but I do, you know, whether it's ZZ Top or, or any of that stuff, this is what you might hear an example of. Right, just descending straight down, and that is awesome. It's one of my favorite riffs to play, you know. And what you're doing is you're just walking down the pentatonic scale, but you're filling in some passing tones, right? So we're going seven, five, seven, five, and then we're going seven, six, five, and down, okay? Now, I did this for years, right? All those notes somehow, but I never really thought about starting six, seven, five, right? So you got. Right, so. And it starts to add this cool, you're descending, but you're, you know, kind of ascending and descending at the same time, and it really creates this really cool vibe. So what I would do is I would go D string, six, seven, down to G5, so. And then I do that stacking, so we got. Descending down, so I'm going seven, five on the D, and then I would, you know, so we got so we got do the stacking again, and then I'm going to do that ascending riff. So when you speed it up. Right, and you start to get um, all that, those sort of riffs. Now I'm gonna break down some of those riffs later on too, but it's all just uh, a continuing theme, right? Of, of pulling in those major notes uh, into what I would consider the minor boxes um, to really get all these cool, like, countrified, you know, it could be kind of Jimmy Page-like uh, rock riffs, right, where you can sound really heavy and really hard rock, but at the same time, you throw in a little something to kind of tickle the ear cilia, you know, just a little tickle, tickle, tickle. So people are like, wow, dude, what was that? Right? And you can kind of go faster, right? Because you're playing all the notes right in a row rather than trying to, you know, master a skill that's impossible like playing like Eric Johnson. <laughs> I have this mental block where I just have a hardest time playing just two notes on one string. So it's way easier for me to throw in chromatic notes and sound quicker. Right, so if you wanna see more of this, again, let me know down below. Get specific 
and I'll try to break it down. I'm not a huge theory guy, so I'm going to tell you straight up front. Theoretical explanations will be half just totally making something up, just to you know sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I'll do my best. I'll ask my friends who are theory masters, and they can maybe break it down. But if you want to see this kind of continuation of a theme keep coming, please let me know. I could do this till I die because it's my favorite thing in the whole world. So just let me know if you want more of that, and I will do it.